Hello. Well, today is the day when I am going to start working on the floor. I'm starting by wiping any dust, giving it a light hand, and making sure that there's no dust so that I can work on a smooth surface. These are some of the things that I'm going to be needing. Scissors, wood glue, masking tape. I'm going to try to create hardwood floor with popsicle sticks. I've never done it before. This is going to be my first attempt. This is going to be for the living room. These are samples of vinyl flooring. This is thick color. They're very thin. So I think it will be easy to work with it. I'm going to, I'm starting by I'm making lines across the, the floor because the surface sometimes is not perfectly straight and I want to maintain it uh, straight. I have to cut the ends of the popsicle sticks because they are rounded. And um, I'm going to use the whole length of the popsicle stick because I want to avoid having to cut too much. Once I cut it, I am making the, the ends smooth by using, I'm going to try the rotary tool. If that doesn't work, then than the sandpaper so that I don't have too many gaps in between the, the plank. I think this is not going to be a very fast project, but I saved the day today so that I could do this. I think it would be very um, <clears throat> ambitious to think that I could finish it today. But if I can finish maybe one or two of the rooms and then um, another weekend I can finish other two of the rooms of the house, then I would be happy. Um, my progress is slow, but I'm enjoying doing it, so I'm taking my time. Each one of the popsicle sticks has to be cut and the ends smooth smooth it and sand it a little bit again this is to avoid having big gaps in between them After I'm done, uh, these scissors probably are not going to be good for anything else. So you might want to use some that you don't care about ru ruining them. And so this process has to be repeated over and over and over again. I was thinking of using a coffee stirs, but they are narrower. So that means that I would have had to do this even that many more times. I have this idea that I don't want to commit to having the floor glued to the, um, to the house. And I am going to attempt to have it sort of like a carpet. I'm going to attempt to glue a mesh behind it or underneath it, I should say, so that I can remove it. Uh, maybe when I want to change the decor of the house or maybe I want to use the rooms differently. Um, so I think I know how I'm going to do it, but... I have to see, I have to wait and see if it works.
this is definitely a process that is very slow. I think I've seen some people that have miniature power tools and a miniature table saw, but I don't have any of those tools. I just have to do with whatever I have handy. And actually the rotary tool <clears throat> splits the wood on the end. So I'm better off using the regular sandpaper or the sandblast. So this is all finished now, ready to for the next step. Now I'm gonna put tape to hold the planks together so that I can then lift it and take it over to my working area and um, and glue it onto the mesh that I'm thinking about putting in the back and underneath it. If this works, I'll be able to lift it. I'm going to be using cheesecloth because it's very thin. The paper that I'm putting underneath is wax paper. Um, I think you can use wax paper. I'm using paper that I actually got from the butcher. <laughs> And the glue that I am applying is wood glue. It, it, the reason I'm using it is because you can actually, once it dries, you can sand it and you can paint over it. And this is the mesh that will make it, that will make my hardwood floor sort of like a carpet that I can move and change and I can utilize the rooms differently if I choose to do so. It's water-based, so I'm thinking that I'm gonna have to let it dry overnight because it will make the, the, uh, the sticks ex expand a little bit. And it can also make them, because there's a little bit of water content, it can make it warp. So I'm gonna let it dry overnight. I have to make sure that I apply it all throughout. Well, now that it's all finished, I am going to cover it with another sheet of uh, paper, wax paper. And I'm gonna have to put something heavy on top so that it dries flat. These are the biggest books that I found around here and um, I'm gonna pile a few of them on. So they dried overnight, and now I'm removing the tape that was holding it together. And I'm gonna, I'm giving it a light tan, not too much, just a, a light tan. And it's all stuck to the mesh. I think that this is, um, I'm thinking that this is going to work. Now I'm removing the excess so that when I 
so that when it's trimmed, it will fit perfectly to the size of the room. Now I'm making nail holes so that it gives the appearance that it has, that it was nail. Now, I think that when I apply the stain that those two little dots would be darker and then it would look like it was nailed to the floor. I am making stain with coffee and hibiscus flower. I want to add the hibiscus flower because I want a little bit of a reddish tint to it and let it cool. And it should be really, really concentrated because I want a lot of color in it. I'm adding a little bit of instant coffee because it wasn't dark enough. I'm applying it with a sponge. And this kind of makes me nervous because being water, it can make the popsicle sticks warp or curl. Or, and I really want it to stay flat and I want it to remain the same size as the room. I'm just going to give it one coat of the stain. I think it's enough and dry the excess of water and again let it dry and I'm gonna pile the books on top of it so that it remains flat as flat as possible. Now I'm applying um the sealant, which is called tongue oil. It's supposed to be heart oil, but I don't know what it's made of. It's supposed to be uh, less toxic than polyurethane. And it's low gloss, so. Now these are the, the um, samples of vinyl. It's exactly 10 centimeters. I'm going to use the centimeters because it's 10 centimeters wide. So I'm going to cut it every two centimeters. They're, they're probably a little bit too thick for the, for my 112 scale, but I don't want to be cutting that much. The regular utility knife would do. They actually cut quite easy. But I have to be careful when I'm using knives because I already made a little cut on my finger and now I'm having a hard time um, holding tools without using my that part of my finger. And they snap. Once I cut them all, I am going to repeat the same steps that I did for the popsicles. Only these ones don't have to be sanded, but I am also going to make the floor removable. And after they, these are, these are the finished product. It was definitely easier and quicker working with the vinyl samples but I like the hardwood much, much better. I like the detail of the nails. It's um, getting late now, so I don't know if the light allows for the details. I like the, uh, the little bit of reddish hue to the color of the stain. And so that is, the bedroom now has 
flooring. I probably should have done the, the wallpaper first, but it doesn't matter because since these are removable, I can take them off and work on my walls and then put them back on. Next week, I will be working on the floor for the kitchen and the bathroom and also the loft. I hope you enjoy this um, episode of my dollhouse renovation. Until next time.